Hello YouTube, today I'm going to make Swamp Pass a thing of an uncivilized past. Because what I'm going to be installing today is a Hanabath bidet. And if for some reason you're not convinced that a bidet is the best way to go, imagine this. Imagine this peanut butter is your number two. There it is, it's on the table. And we take our standard toilet paper and we try to clean it up. Doesn't really work, does it? That's kind of what I think of toilet paper. It just smears the shit. Why would you want to do this to yourself? And that's a hard surface. It's actually more accurate to put peanut butter on a cat and then trying to wipe it off with toilet paper. Truth be told, I have no idea what the brand Hannah Bath even is. That being said, it looks quite nice. I am a bit worried about this solder joint though. Seems very sloppily done. It was sold by Trust me, so this is probably a Chinese manufacturer, who knows. But the idea is as follows. This will mount to the wall. This neck right here is where the hose attachment will go. It has two inlets for hot and cold. This here in the center is both the hot and cold mix valve plus the on and off valve. I chose this because it seemed like the sturdiest design and I don't like the idea of having old man winter blow icy cold water up my butthole and the idea of metal just seems more reliable than the plastic attachments that are really popular on Amazon. The other reason I chose the hand bath is because I don't like those PEX pipes that they provide with those plastic toilet attachments with the knobs and dials. It's just it's weird and seems cheap and seems like it's prone to failure especially if it breaks for some reason and you're not home and it, you've got the toilet seat up and it's just gonna squirt water on your floor. I don't like to mess around with anything water related like that. So the basic idea is this. I'm gonna attach it around here somewhere on the side. Um, what needs to happen is I need to tee off off of my water supply. These are standard half inch copper pipes. And I need to provide either a tee or some kind of valve to go between the braided hose and the copper stem coming out of there. Therefore, what Hannah Bath provides you in and of itself is not enough to complete the install. You're gonna need to visit the plumbing supply store. Here's what I got. I got these two brass nipples, half inch to half inch brass nipple, buck 80 a piece. Here we've got a two-way or three-way stop as they call it. Got two of them. It's just a compression fitting here on the bottom. It's a 5 8 inch. And these are just 3 8 inch compression fittings. Two 3 way stops, 3 8 inch and one 5 8 inch connection. That's down on the bottom here. Compression fitting, two brass nipples, two of these lav risers right here. One end being half inch and the other end being 3 8 of an inch. All compression fittings. I have one 12 inch extension here just in case I need more length. And this has one 3 8 inch compression fitting on this end. Well, on the other end, if you take this off, this is what will let me extend the hose if I need it. And don't forget the Teflon tape. Two ways we're going to be looking at some sandpaper, some wood boring bits, file, pipe cutter, drill. That's about it. Oh, and probably a wrench. I'm mounting mine to the sink cabinet. I want to put it where this uh, toilet paper holder is. It's kind of a weird way that they attached it, so I'll be getting rid of that first and building up a wood plate. That is seriously bizarre. Just look at this contraption they created just to mount it here. But anyways, crafted a little plate. All right, we're looking good. Easily the finest craftsmanship this side of the f***ing Mississippi. We're gonna be drawing where to drill the holes. Got two different size holes to drill here. I'm gonna use this cover plate as a template. Looks like we got one inch hole and one one and a quarter inch hole. And of course you have to be careful because you don't want, just for purely aesthetic reasons, to have your handle here stick out above the counter. So 
once you put the hose on, it's going to be a little extra height, so it's, it's a good thing I checked. Just kind of a rough outline. Make sure you pay attention which way you spin this, easy to make a mistake. Handle on the right, therefore, the smaller hole going on the right hand side. Yep, just like that. Use a level, of course. Roughly speaking, yeah, I can see my both my top and bottom mark here, so that's fine. Looking good. Okay, as dead center as possible. All right, that's a one-inch hole. Minor problem on this end, however, the joiner here is interfering with this. I'll have to relocate it. All right, looks like I still had space for my good friend, the drawer. Move that up just a hair. Let's do a little test fit with our hoses and nipples. <laughs> Boy, that was a close call with that hose there, huh? It's like pretty much as far as it bends. <laughs> I uh, would have been in trouble. Hopefully this isn't too extreme an angle. I guess we'll find out when we turn on the pressure. Now it's plumbing time. Let's do Teflon tape. With the fitting facing away from you, we're going to be turning it counterclockwise. We do this so that when we screw it in, the Teflon tape doesn't unravel. All right. Insert it in, you don't have to tighten it super hard. We're gonna take care of that with a wrench in a bit. All right, got it in. Now you tighten it with your wrench. All right, we are tight. Uh, side note, this is gonna be the hot water inlet and this is gonna be the cold water inlet. Now comes the p fun part. Gotta hack away a little bit. Um, first of all, make sure that your hoses reach before you start chopping things up because there's really no going back after this. So I've got my cold water intake and looks like it'll reach just fine. Here I've got my 30 inch hose plus extension. Let us start with cold. Double check. Oh geez. Well, that did, that did a bunch of f***, didn't it? Does that mean this valve here is gone? That's a hell of a surprise, let me tell you, but... Well, that's why we've got this main water shutoff valve here. Hopefully this one works. Alright, let's find out. Okay. No pressure anywhere. Excellent. I was gonna keep the old valves, but well now there's obviously no point. So, I'm gonna hack it off. I'm gonna attach this new one there with the compression fitting. All right, so undid the old hose there. It doesn't have a hell of a lot of reach. That might be a problem later. And it'll have to go all the way down here. So, I'm already screwed on that end. I'm gonna need run and buy a new one of these. Shit. On the other hand, screw that idea. Hoses are expensive. They're like at least $15 a pop. I happen to have ex some spare copper pipe laying around, some fitting, so I'm just gonna solder extra length pipe where I'm gonna make the cut. Just oh. it, cause I can. Told it would probably be a hell of a lot easier doing this with uh, shark bite fittings, but 
tell you the truth, I don't like them, I don't trust them. I'm sure they're fine, but I think this will last a lot longer. In ring on. Hopefully, this is going to be long enough Just to get it on just barely. Tell you the truth, I don't know if this will be watertight. Let's see if it works. Let's put that hose on. It already has a rubber gasket, so I don't think I need a. Uh... Teflon tape here. <laughs> Nurse, let's go downstairs and turn that water on. The real test begins right now. But we don't have any water coming out of the joints. So I guess we soldered it nicely. Ooh, noise. Scary. Then coming out of here. No. What's that? We need to be tightened a little bit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> It's uh, diverting it back into the uh, hot pipe, so I guess I'm gonna need to hook that up first. Oopsie daisy. All right, got that all soldered in. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that it's a work of art, but it should be fine. Tighten up some of the connections I saw leaking. Let's go back downstairs and turn it back on. Hot water back on. I see a drippy do. Oh, I forgot to tighten that. All right, I'll tighten. Okay, no problem. That we can tighten. Okay, water's on. Ooh. I think it has several settings. Yeah, just regular stream, high pressure. Nice. Full blast. For when you just had some Taco Bell and it just won't come off. <laughs> All right. Well, isn't that beautiful? And there it is. Yeah. I like this double trouble here. Shut off here, shut off here. Having redundancy when it comes to something just hanging out here without a sink to drain into, that gives me a bit of peace of mind. That, my friends, is how you install a Hannah Bath bidet sprayer. And as for a review, I mean, it's handsome, it works incredibly well. You can control this infinitely variable valve, so it doesn't have to be a full blast. And there's no ugly contraption to attach to your toilet. It looks incredibly handsome, no plastic, shit and you can direct the stream exactly where you need it to go. I think it's infinitely better than your average uh, toilet attachment. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I'm going to put a link in the description for this below. And as always, destroy that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Yeah!